and everyone welcome to our Ma Astrobites where we take astronomy and break it down into bite-sized chunks. We have director Michael Burton here today again to talk about the stars, where they're found, what they're made of, how they're born, how they live and how they die. So Michael, first I've got a question about the stars to consider. What is the Milky Way? The Milky Way is that beautiful sight you see on a dark, dark night when out of the moon you see this band of uh, white across the sky and it looks like a milky smudge on the sky. What it is, is a band of stars, hundreds of thousands of millions of stars in fact in the sky. We can only see a few thousand of them, but that's the galaxy we live in. And all those stars, those stars are suns, just like our own sun, we're seeing countless suns spread across the sky. Are all the stars as white as they look in the sky? Well, that's what it looks like at first glance, isn't it? You look up in the sky and you see these white stars and then you look a bit more closely and you start to see some colours. You might see a few stars which look to be red and one or two which is slightly bluer. But in fact, our eyes are not very good at night. They're not very sensitive. So colour is actually very hard for us to see at night. But if you get a telescope out, like this picture we're seeing here, we see the stars have colours. And those colours start to tell us a lot about what the stars are. The first thing a colour tells you is the temperature of the star. You can work out the red ones are actually cooler, the blue ones are hotter. And then analysing it further, astronomers can use the colours then to work out uh, the sizes of the star, the properties, the properties of the star, essentially what the stars are like, how big they are. So colours are a very important part of understanding what the stars are. Wow, amazing that we can see that just from our Earth as well. So a lot of the photos that we see from space, especially from Hubble, they're pictures of nebulae. What are nebulae? Well, indeed, we see these beautiful pictures, don't we, from our telescopes now, the Hubble Space Telescope in particular. Nebulae are really clouds of gas, and there's various types of clouds of gas, and they're usually lit up by stars in some, some form or other. This particular one here, we're seeing the Triffid Nebula, is a cloud of gas which is lit up by the light of young stars. It essentially represents star birth. In the middle of that core there, that red nebula, there are clouds of gas. In fact, the dark lanes you can see there are actually clouds of dust and gas which are stopping some of the light getting out. But other light is escaping and that red colour, is that red colour comes from hot hydrogen gas at about 10,000 degrees and it's surrounding a massive bright luminous star which has recently born, been born uh, in the middle of that cloud. So some, uh, some stars, uh, some nebulae represent star birth. And you can see there in the image that a lot of the stars are quite close together and our sun is a star and it's by itself. Are any stars um, together still now? Well indeed, in fact most stars are actually uh, members of multiple systems or found in clusters. Our, our sun today uh, is a bit unusual, it's by itself, but during its birth uh, four and a half billion years ago it most likely was formed as part of a cluster. So most stars come in clusters and in within those clusters, some of those stars are binary systems or triple systems or multiple systems. So here we see two kinds of clusters. The one on the left is one you can see with your own naked eye. It's a young star cluster. It's called the Pleiades, sometimes known as the Seven, Seven Sisters. It's an open star cluster, a relatively few number of stars, a few hundred stars, relatively close to us. It's about 400 light years away and the stars are actually quite young. By astronomical standards, they're about 50 million years old. But on the right, we see a very ancient star cluster, a star cluster that was formed about when our galaxy was formed. It was formed about 12 billion years ago. It still has about a million stars in it, and it's a very, very long way away. It's about 18,000 light years. It's really a cluster which is kind of an orbit around our galaxy. It was formed at about the same time as our galaxy, and then if you look closer, you can start to see some of the colours of the stars. You can see the reds and the blues, particularly the reds, and those represent red giant stars, stars which in fact are getting towards the end of their lives. Excellent. So we've seen how stars are born there in nebulae and how they can exist together in large groups as well. But our sun, our sun's a star. Is it ever going to die? And when will that be? And what will that look like? Well, I'm afraid it is. Our sun is not going to last forever. In fact, our sun's about middle age at the moment, it's about halfway through its life cycle. It's roughly 5 billion years old, probably 4.6 billion. It's got another 5 billion years or so to go. Uh, and it's going to essentially run out of fuel one day. Eventually, it will run out of its hydrogen fuel. And what will happen is it will expand, it will expand up to what's called a red giant, 
and then gently waft, up, waft off its outer layers. And that's what we see here. We see a star which has actually died and the outer layers of the star have been blown off and that forms this spectacular nebula, the helix nebula, where essentially the, the red giant has just expanded and been blown away, leaving the core, the nuclear burning core, the remnants of it, what's known as a white dwarf, where the nuclear burning core, most of the mass of the star, about the size of our Earth. So that's the remnants, the dying star, called a planetary nebula. And our Earth couldn't continue to live around this kind of star? No, it couldn't, I'm afraid. When the, in fact, when the sun expands to become a, a red giant, uh, that will be the end of our Earth, at least as far as life is concerned in it. So that's one way a star can die. Um, do all stars die the way that our sun will? There's really two ways that stars can die. Gentle star death that our sun will uh, undergo, but then there's violent star death, when a star will actually literally explode and blow itself apart. That's what's shown in this picture here, the remnants from a stellar explosion. It only happens for the most massive stars, stars which are probably at least eight times as massive as, as our sun. And what happens essentially is that the, uh, the nuclear burning core undergoes essentially runaway nuclear fusion. It uses up fuel quicker and quicker and quicker and eventually literally implodes on itself. The star explodes, the, star, the core collapses in itself. We see this expanding cloud of debris moving out at thousands of kilometers a second, forming what's called a supernova remnant, whereas the core of the star collapses in itself and forms uh, a neutron star when the whole, the whole sun essentially is compressed to about the size, uh, about 10 kilometers across, much even smaller than the Earth, or sometimes even to a black hole. It actually collapses completely and we can't see it anymore. So that's violent star death and it happens to the most massive stars in the galaxy. And this actually can be responsible for creating new elements and causing and generating life in a future, future generation of stars, which we'll talk about in a future astrobytes. Wow, well, I'm looking forward to hearing about that in a future one. But that is the end of our questions for today on stars. That's all I have for you. Um, so Michael, thank you for answering some of my questions about stars. It's very interesting. And it's also good to know the life cycle of a star and to actually find out that's how black holes are made. So thank you so much. Thank you, Courtney. We'll be back next week.